Okay, my meeting's starting. I have to join it now. This is like $6,000. Why are you working remotely when you work at Amazon? We need some sort of distraction for everybody. Anything new on YouTube? All right, it is 7.20 in the morning. I just got paged and I have about 15 minutes before it pages my manager. So let's get started for my day as a software engineer. Hey Google, turn on the lights. I have turned on the lights. I have a really busy work day ahead. I have to work on this ticket that I got paged about. I have project deadlines that I need to deliver on this week. And I have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with my manager, which for some reason, these meetings always make me super anxious. I'm kind of stressed out and I really hope I can get it all done. just got paged again. That's so annoying. Looks like it's related to the first error that I got. Sometimes this happens because the workflow was failing earlier. So I'll have to update those tickets and make sure to present that in the meeting that I have later today. Yeah, something bad is happening in the pipeline right now, so. I realized last night that at this rate, I will never finish all the work I have to do. What work? What work? What work, she asks. I don't know about you, but when I start a work day, I tend to get like very overwhelmed with all the things I need to do that day. So I like to just write a list. Also, look at this. Is this anyone else's desktop? It's entirely filled with screenshots. This happens after my on-call because I'll just like screenshot a bunch of metrics and then be putting them in my ticket report. The first thing I have to do is create an on call report, which I will present in a meeting that I have at 10 a.m., which is a few hours from now. And basically this team meeting is so that the next on call person knows what I did during the week and what they need to continue on. So I only have a little bit of time to finish this report, but I don't think I can do that without some caffeine right now. So let's go get some coffee. At 8 a.m. today, someone poisons the coffee. Do not drink the coffee. More instructions will follow. Cordially, future Dwight. Okay, I'm back. I got my Vietnamese coffee. And then it's also purple because it's ube flavored. And Vietnamese coffee is like pretty strong, but also really sweet, which I like. So much sugar. Okay, my meeting's starting. I have to join it now. Hello. Hey, Sam. Yeah, I'm just working from home today. Okay, so first we're gonna look at the Sev 2s. I got four Sev 2s this week. I got two of them this morning. I was taking a look at the numbers and it looked like they're missing some data for the previous month. There's like a mismatch. I'm checking later today. What did I can send a message on the channel if there's something pending. Okay, sounds good. I think that's all from me today. Bye, have a nice day. I finished my handover meeting, which means now I am free. I'm no longer on call anymore. I feel like I worked like a student because during my meeting, I was taking handwritten notes. It sticks in my brain a little bit better when I'm writing things down. Oh, and then also I print out and label highlight all over the design documents instead of just reading it from my laptop. Just to address the elephant in the room, like why are you working remotely when you work at Amazon? Because what about the return to the office? I am only hybrid temporarily. So I still have to go into the office like three days a week. And that's because there's actually not enough desks in my building or for my floor. And I actually heard this is a problem for some of the offices in New York. I do not have to go in every single day. I just have to go in three times a week. Okay, let's get back to work because I have a lot to do. I knew exactly what to do, but in a much more real sense, I had no idea what to do. I'm really happy that my team has a relatively chill on-call rotation. First, we have a big team of eight or so people, so I'm only on-call every two months. And each time I'm on-call, on average, I just get paged one to four times. I still get a bit anxious getting paged, but I actually don't mind being on-call these days. It's a nice break from my project work, and I get to learn a bit about the other services our team owns. I did just find out that I'm going to be on-call for Christmas. Hopefully, I can swap with someone who might be available to do it. Now that I've been working at Amazon for almost a year now, I feel like I've learned a 
lot of things about how it works to be a software engineer and just like techniques that make you a better software engineer and one of them is like having good code quality one way that you can kind of measure your code quality is based on like how many revisions that your code reviews require that's something i didn't know and i've been just trying to make sure that when i make a code change it's like as perfect as i can get it because i don't want to do more revisions so This week, I spent most of my time working on some customer tickets. They were basically asking why our financial numbers didn't quite match up with the ones they were seeing. From this, I learned a lot about what data sets to query and how to investigate these variances. It was pretty interesting and it turned out it was some upstream service that had the data wrong and I had to cut a ticket to them. When you're on call, you have to work on many tickets and they're all a different problem. And occasionally, there might be an impromptu task deadline that gets introduced and you'll need to quickly switch to something completely different. It's kind of like when you're studying for back-to-back finals and you have to juggle many subjects at once. To make it easier, I like to switch up my location between tasks so I can get a better reset when I start something new. Plus, working at home can feel isolating, so I like to work at a cafe to get some human interaction. So I'm going to take you to my favorite cafe before my next meeting, but first, let me show you what I'm taking with me in my everyday work bag. Okay, to start off, I have the M1 MacBook Pro. It's the 16 inch with 32 gigabytes of RAM. This is my work computer, which is crazy because this is like $6,000, I'm pretty sure, if I bought it retail. This this laptop is absolutely amazing. At any given second, I'll have like 50 bajillion tabs open, like VS Code running, all these different things in the background, and it still runs so fast. The only downside is that it is 16 inches, so then I don't have a lot of bag options. I can only really wear it with my one backpack which leads me into the next thing I have, which is this Lululemon backpack. I get a lot of questions about it. I love how it's a beige color. It's a bit dirty right now, but it's really cute. And on my backpack, I have a Frenchie keychain. I have a frog and I did have a jelly cat egg, but I was scared that people would steal it. So I took it off. This is like actually what's in my bag. I didn't organize anything at all. I'm just pulling things out. For starters, I have two pieces of audio equipment. This is my nothing headphones and this is a Hubba Bubba AirPod. There's nothing worse than not having AirPods or any sort of music when you're taking transit. I like to have backups because sometimes I forget to recharge my AirPods. I also do like the sound quality on these nothing headphones. I will just say that my head is pretty big so it kind of hurts my head sometimes because it's a bit too tight. Other than that, love it. Also, they look so cool. Like, check it out. Now onto the fun stuff, my stationery. So I have these Muji pens. I really like these. And then these highlighters that I stole from work. I also have this notepad that I stole from work as well. This has any of my design or my thoughts or anything. I just like write it down. So basically for my project, there's a ton of design documents. There's probably like 20 design documents and some of them are older, some of them are newer. I like to print out the ones that I really need, take notes on it, write any questions I have and then ask the senior engineer and then kind of come back to review this. I've probably read through these documents like seven times before really understanding, but definitely highlighting and taking notes has really helped me. Another thing that I have are these glasses. They're not blue light tinted. I've been dealing with like eye strain every single day because I look at the screen like for eight hours and then I come home, look at my phone and then my eyes are just like throbbing every single day. So I don't know if blue light works. Let me know in the comments down below if you've tried it. And another piece of tech that I have is the iPad. I've always wanted to have an iPad and this one has an OLED screen, which is really nice for looking at videos. Sometimes I take notes on this. Sometimes I do 3D sculptures like this one I have here. And I love the pen that comes with it. This is really cool I take notes on this and take a lot of like to-do lists and like to cross stuff out Looks like next on my to-do list is I have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with my manager So I'm gonna have to go to a cafe get some work done before that meeting This is not an herbal tea morning. This is a coffee morning every morning for you is a coffee morning I find myself at this cafe a few times a week. It's so cute and aesthetic and it happens to be one of the only cafes that's open late in the evening. I come here to work on my job or my little side projects. 
So earlier today, I also had a meeting with a senior engineer on my team to discuss my project. In my previous one-on-one -on -one with my manager, he mentioned that I should set up these meetings to stay on track with the work I need to do. I honestly felt a bit bad because I don't want to take up any more of this engineer's day because they're extremely busy, but it has been really helpful to have these project meetings. I've been having a lot of local development issues with my project, and after talking to senior engineer, I decided it's time to migrate from one build tool to another. So today, I'm drafting another design document for this migration. I'll need to scope the changes I need to make, the steps it will take, the effort estimates, and how I can leverage AI to speed up this process. It's kind of a big undertaking because there's nine packages I need to migrate and there isn't really clear steps online on how to do it, but I honestly think it's the best time to do this migration because all of my code is just in beta and there's no downstream customers of this data yet. Hopefully the internal Amazon AI tools can help me make this process a lot faster so I can get back to development. Speaking of AI, there's a lot of conversation online about whether AI is good and whether we should be using it. Honestly, this is my opinion. AI is the direction of the future. If you're not using AI tools to speed up your workflows, I think you're going to get left behind. Even at work, it's actually encouraged. And every week there are new technologies being introduced that make each part of the development process faster. It is scary because it's unknown what this will mean for the future of engineers. So here's what I do to get a software job right now. Build something that uses AI and actually solves a real problem. Maybe something like a restaurant helper that answers do you have a table at 7 and texts a confirmation with directions. Then when you're done, ship your app, record a one minute demo and get some users using it so that a hiring manager can see the real impact. I actually want to play with AI tools a bit more. So after work today, I'm going to build an app that integrates Google's new image model. So stay tuned because it's going to be really cute. All right, so I just wrapped up on work. I finished my one-on-one -on -one meetings with my manager. I got a lot of my project done, which I'm happy with, and I'm just gonna put that aside for now. So now we're just gonna be working on my coding project, which I'm really excited to share with you because it's really cute. So I'm building an outfit generator app. Basically, I'm making this app because my closet is very big. I have a ton of clothes, and every morning I spend about like 30 minutes trying to pick out an outfit, and I just want it to be a lot faster. Okay, so I've been designing my app, and I've thought out what it's gonna look like. This is the Figma for it. It has a Windows 98 design, so it looks like a retro Windows pop-up. You can choose between your tops from just like clicking left and right here, and same with the bottom. When you press the button where, it should generate the outfit on my model. This is what it would look like if I didn't use AI. It would just be a shirt, pants, pasted on an image of myself. But with Google Nano Banana, I can actually make it look like I'm wearing these clothing items, and like even has good lighting. It looks like there's wrinkles in the clothes. It's like being tucked into my pants. The jeans fold over my shoes. It's insane. So right now, I. I only have like these stock images. This is a really bad picture of me. There's like branches in the back and also these pictures are from like Abercrombie. So I'm gonna take pictures of my actual wardrobe right now. So I just got changed to a basic outfit. This is what the clothes will go onto in my app. I've actually had this outfit idea for a while and I spent a lot of time on the design at first. I wanted it to be a cute character that you could dress up like a video game with a room background. I actually worked on it last December, tried a few designs, but I could not get it to look right. So I decided to scrap the idea and restart. I really do wish I had more design experience because I feel like a good UI will make or break an app. Right now, this is my app. I've kind of implemented the Windows 98 feature. This is where the, where this is where the outfit images can go. This is where the tops and bottoms are and you can just like click these buttons here well they should do something but now i don't have any photos in it yet i don't know if you've watched like the movie clueless but i've always loved how Cher had this outfit generator it's really cute that's how she would choose her outfits every day i'm gonna do one too just with ai and since i don't work on any front end at my job it's nice to take on a front end heavy project like this because it gives me a way to display my work at first when i started coding this i was using the wrong model i was still making the api calls but i did not get an image back i kept just spamming the button because I thought it was the button that was the problem and ended up making about 100 API calls in 10 minutes. Thankfully, I was still on the free tier and hadn't set up billing yet. Otherwise, I think I would have been charged a lot. Some features 
Others I want to add include an occasion generator where you can type a prompt like first day of school or Met Gala and Nano Bandana will generate an outfit for that occasion. I also want to add a feature where you upload a photo of an outfit from your Pinterest inspo board and then you can try it on yourself. I have been so excited to create with these AI tools and I'm excited to share the final result. I feel like coding has become so much more fun again. Okay, so quick update. I've been able to set up the API connection between my service and Gemini and I've been able to call Nano Banana for my service. Some of my clothing items, when you pair them together, it actually looks a bit weird. Overall, I think it looks really good. I just need to make some tweaks with the UI, make sure the caching set up and maybe take some better pictures of my clothes. I also realized that having socks on makes it look a little bit odd. So I think I'm gonna put shoes on. And oh, also I'm gonna fix the UI because it should have like a bit of a loading bar to show like what is going on. Let me know in the comments down below what other features I should add. Maybe I should actually set up a database because right now I'm just storing all of these images locally. <sighs> I don't know, I don't even wanna deal with that. I hate styling. I just want it to look cute in one frame and then just like forget about it. So it's getting late and I'm getting a bit hangry, but at least I'm pretty much done the app. My friend just texted me to go to dinner and I don't have much time. So I'm using my app and I picked out these two outfits. I think it looks pretty cute. So we're gonna go to dinner now. <laughs> 